What's going on guys, Roma the Roma here. I'm here with my cousin, Drew Flesner. He's been selling for about a year and a half. Year and a half? Yeah, is that right? Yeah, a little, am I jumping the gun? No, <laughs> you're right on the gun, bro. All right. Year and a half. Um, and he predominantly sells on Amazon. He's experimenting a little bit with eBay now, and he's in college. What's your GPA? 3.8 something. Good student. He's, how many hours are you taking? That's a lot, I know it is. Have I taken? Like right now, like how many hours are you taking? A semester? Yeah. Like 15, 16, maybe not. So he's doing decent hours and uh, he's finding finding ways to make money. What was your biggest sales month, would you say? S F sales month? Yeah, like um, past 30 days, what'd you get up to? Like uh, not, not now, but like ever. Um, in August, oh, shit. I had like, I think 2K month which i mean isn't a lot for some yeah. people but yeah i mean like but doing this while you're in college you know part-time where where do you find time to like actually source is it on the weekends are you pulling but i know you, i tell you you should be pulling more books from students um when do you yeah. find time to actually get books yeah on the weekends i go out to the thrift stores in my city it's about five or six um not every weekend i probably go like once a month and I try to keep my inventory at about 200. How long did it take you to get up there? Oh, a little while. The first, I'm not gonna lie, like the first month was not great. There's like a, I thought there was like a little hump you had to get over um, to build your inventory up. And then I yeah. uh, started seeing more profits. So that was dope. Would, would you say like, just with money, like cause you had like, how much money did you have day one starting out? Do you remember? In my bank account? Yeah. Like two hundred bucks. So, was I mean, ca was cash flow ever an issue for you? Like going out and dropping like, you know, tw 20, 30 bucks at a store. Uh, yeah. Because um, I get that question all the time. People are like, you know, Avery, how are you sourcing all these books? And I kind of got into it slow, and I got to the point where I was having decent Amazon payouts to where you know a dollar a book was nothing. So. Yeah. What? Well, when I yeah when I first started that was a problem, but. I first started with you, uh, s sourcing for you, and you would pay me, and so I got... Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I got money instantly, and so I kind of built up money then, and I was also working part-time at a wage job at Target. Was so, that last, that was last, was that last summer? Yeah, it was last summer. Not even a year and a half then. It's like a year. But I mean, and, but during the winter... Oh, true, yeah. The, like, yeah, we, first few textbooks that. that you, yeah. So, um... Yeah, I had cash flow coming from another source of two, another part-time job. So, um, you said about two two hundred's like. <laughs> okay, so you said two hundred is where your inventory was at uh, when you started. You said consistent sales was around that time. Uh, no, I don't remember what when. No, I started seeing sales about a hundred. Okay, and that's actually what you told me. I would start seeing them at um, almost daily then, but two hundred I find gives me enough money to keep it going and for ex like money, extra money to spend mm -hmm. so like big balls yeah just like so yeah, yeah. Two, 200 in inventory um, sourcing on the weekends what advice would you have because I, I mean a lot of college kids watch this they want extra money they don't want to work a job they want to have freedom hours um, what would you recommend you know if they have a couple extra hours a day like where, where's like the best place to spend your time? How much money should they be spending at these stores? You know, cause I mean, you're doing this on a budget. So like you have experience with that. Um, what I thought was a good trick was the booksalefinder.com. Cause that helped me find a ongoing library sale in my city, which gave me a ton of inventory for really cheap too. So that was a good resource. Um, that's all the tips I got. I can't Did you go there with Jason? No, it was with Tony and Tony, Tony, Aaron. Yeah, I think. Tony and Aaron. Was that like you're teaming up on the sale during that? Yeah, we were teaming up hard. Okay. That's another thing, guys. I just spilled some coke on my shirt. But if you team up at library <laughs> up sales, that's a um, hard. You're, you're able to you're able to source way harder, is what I think he's trying to say. You're able to really maximize how much time you have so how much or not how much time you have but how much how much time how much your time is worth 
So if you go in a library sale with three people, you're literally gonna pull out three times as many books because library sales are only worth a damn for the first hour. So how many how many library sales did you hit up with Book Sale Finder? Uh, one, two, library? Library sales. The one, no, the one library is an ongoing sale. Oh, okay, but did so you, like did you ever hit up? Yeah, I went to Decatur's, and there's another reseller there, and he got there before me and had a shit ton more books. You punch him in the nuts? Yeah, no, for real though, he like, he got there probably 30 minutes before me, and he freaking had a cart load, and I had like half a cart. That's some bullshit, but he beat me to it. So yeah, you gotta get there early. Regarding college campuses, I always say that they're a gold mine. Do you have any stories of finding books laying around, like in free boxes or certain rooms? <laughs> or I mean, yeah, I found a couple. Probably like three balls. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, there was a free bookshelf or a bookshelf of free books in our engineering building. And I went there and I sourced and pulled like 30 something books off that were like all textbooks. And I know one of them's already sold for like 90 something bucks. It was literally free money. Um, yeah, and I found a couple in free bins from professors cleaning out their offices. But other than that, I have sourced some from some students. I did that in the winter. Yeah. Um, one question I really have. <laughs> one question. <laughs> uh, one question that I have that I want to get into. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you've been selling on eBay. <laughs> so you're selling on eBay now, and this morning when you're heading over, you texted me that you sold a beanie baggie? What, what the hell was that? You sold a beanie baggie. <laughs> No, it was a Beanie Baby. Beanie Baby. Yeah, those little stuffed animals from like the 90s. So this dude texted me like two days ago and he's like, or a day ago. He's yeah, like, it was yesterday. Yeah, he was like, hey man, I just like went to this estate sale. I was trying the Gary Vee thing and I picked up these Beanie Babies. And I'm just like, whatever, man. I'm scanning books. I'm making real money. And then this morning, tell him what happened. Yeah, so at the estate sale, I picked up eight Beanie Babies for a quarter each. So two bucks. And... I listed one of them last night for four ninety nine because of some like tag error, uh, and then I woke $499. up four hundred ninety nine dollars. Yeah, four hundred ninety nine, not four, not five dollars. Um, and I woke up this morning to an offer of five hundred and twenty dollars. So yeah, did you take it? I did. Oh yeah, he thinks it. it he, you saw that it sold for around two fifty to. Yeah, it two. sold for like two, two seventy something, so, and then like five something also, like within the last month. So, like when you're looking at eBay <laughs> items, how do you know if they, how do you know if they're good to sell or not? Like, what do you do? Like Amazon seller app, you open it up, you know, for books if it's got a decent rank, which in my opinion is like sub one hundred fifty thousand, it's a good book. Uh, it's gonna sell. It's a book that sells often. With eBay, what do you do? eBay, it's a little. It's it's different than Amazon. There's no ranks, but what you do is you search the item, whatever it is, you search it, like you're gonna buy it, and then in the top corner there is a filter button. You filter it, and there's a sold and completed tab. You click that, and it shows you all the sales of that item through, I don't know how far back it goes, but it goes really far back. So it shows you how much it's sold for and when. So it shows you how frequently and for how much. And so what do you, do you just look at that and you're like, okay, you, you saw it sold for like what, 250? Two? Yeah, I saw it sold like within the last month, like twice for a lot of money. So the most recent sales are probably the most important, right? Yeah. Okay. Are you looking at number of used offers? No, I don't normally, no, I don't do that too yeah. much. I don't know if you should, I'm really new to it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm no eBay expert. I, I just don't know. but. Like with Amazon, it's kind of a concern when there's a lot of FBA sellers, especially for textbooks, because you know it's gonna probably tank when everyone turns on the repricers at once. If there's a ton of FBA guys, you can expect that price to go down. But um, with eBay, there's no good way of knowing 
33 offers, right? You just gotta scroll down and kind of count. Yeah. Or, I mean, we'll show like if you. I mean, if you type in Beanie Baby, it's gonna show like 100 results. But it yeah, could be, it's like, gonna show. It could be like Beanie Baby like hats or something. It could be like something an accessory, <clears throat> not just. Yeah. Well, with Amazon, you'll have like the listing, and under that listing, it shows you all the offers. But with eBay, it just shows you a bunch of listings. It doesn't show you like one listing has four offers from four sellers. Yeah. It's just like every seller has like their own listing, if that makes sense. So it can be kind of hard to see the competition, but but then again, I've heard that that doesn't really matter so much, but just look at what it's sold for and how frequently. So to just switch on those filters is the important part. Right. So I, I think, yeah, I, I really do think this is impressive to be able to keep a 3.8 GPA and also resell on Amazon. How do you, and you're getting pretty jacked, dude. Show him those muscles. <laughs> getting swole. This dude's getting swole right now. He used to be tiny. He's huge. Huge. Um, how do you, how do you manage your time? Um, like, what, what are you doing, man? I mean, academics come first. And then, but yeah, I don't, well, I don't do it that often. It's not something that you have to keep doing it doesn't take that much time. It probably takes eight or nine hours of my time per month. So that's like nothing compared to like having a, a wage job that pays hourly. And I get decent profits back. As, uh, but as far as like, I'm actually really interested, like how much time do you put in for the classroom? Like how do you maintain a 3.8? Because I feel like this is something in the reseller community. A lot of people talk shit about school. A lot of people talk down on school. It's kind of like the Gary V mentality. Like he's always talking shit about his teachers. But I think there is something like I don't know honorable if that's the right word. But it takes discipline, and it takes discipline to grow a business. Um, it, it takes discipline to get shit done. And and so obviously you're doing something right. What like. What are you doing in that aspect of your life to, to maintain that? Because, I mean, that's, that's no joke. And, like, I know you did, you're a good student in high school, too. What, has that always been, like, the standard for you? It's just, like... Yeah, I mean, there's scholarships I have to keep. Yeah, so that, that's so, motivation. But, okay, you yeah. wake up, you know, like, if you want to make money reselling, you got to take action. you got to go to the thrift store. you got to scan stuff. you got to go to library sales. You have to do something to grow your business. You can't just think about it. Um, same with studying, like you have to actually sit down and do it. But like, do, do, okay, I guess, I guess what I'm getting at is do you actually like sit down and focus for like three hours, no interruptions? Or do you block out your time? Like, what are you doing with that? Like, what's your day look like? You wake up. Oh, okay. Like, do you, do you go study for a while? Like, An average day looks like wake up, go to class, eat go to the gym and then eat again and study so I become more of a night owl like I'll stay up till like three or four in the morning whereas some people get up really early and it's just not for me but um, so I guess that might be the trade-off is having to stay up super late but I don't know it's just doing the work that's what most of it is People just are lazy. <laughs> so how'd your biceps get so big? Um, so I do, what I used to do was like an arm day, arm chest, back, shoulder split. So each muscle group had their own day, except for arm I put together. Uh, but recently I switched to a chest try, back and by, just shoulders and legs. I don't know why I'm getting really into this, but shoulders and legs. Um, and some people do a rest day. We can't, we can't rest, all right, we gotta keep going. So then it'll be chest and try, back and by, legs again. So you can hit each muscle group twice a week. Um, as far as how I got my thighs so big, they're not that big, but. Compared to what, what you they, used to be. Yeah, I put on about 30 pounds. It's impressive. Over? The, since freshman year of college. So this is your third uh, year of college? Yeah, I didn't. Well, I guess it didn't start until like sophomore year, pretty much. Wow. 
Yeah, so, so you, you put on you put on there. mass fast, and that mean that took a lot of focus, right? Yeah, a lot of dedication. Yeah. Um. Just gotta eat. And you just gotta be consistent. Like with anything, if you're consistent, you'll get the results. So be consistent in the gym. Be consistent with your FBA business, and you'll see results. I think, I think you could crush it with FBA, just over the summer, especially like, because you're so disciplined in like certain areas of your life, you know, like school, three point eight GPA. You've done a lot, you know, physically to build your body up. That that takes. I know that takes a lot of effort, um, and you've even like you know maintained like sales rolling for a whole year, like you know above five hundred. Would you say every thirty days they stay above yeah, five hundred? I mean, it's yeah. nothing crazy, but. I mean, that pays for a lot of your food, right? You know, extra. Yeah, I'm not like trying to do this like as a full time thing, just to get money from bills and food. But what if you did? You what if you went hard? I'm if I wanted, yeah. If I wanted to go hard, of course my results would be different. But it's just not what I want to do as a full time gig. <laughs> Motivate, formulate, liberate. Yeah, Dude, that was <laughs> such a good idea, bro. What was that idea? Oh, that was the idea freshman year with affiliate links was gonna build a website build a presence on social media like Instagram pretty much and get people to buy products through an affiliate link um, what's an affiliate link glad you asked that uh, I asked him this question like he said freshman year so like three years ago yeah I didn't know what affiliate link was, and he was like, tell me about this. Affiliate link is a link where if a customer clicks on your link to a product and buys that product, you get a commission. So let's say you have a workout YouTube channel, and you recommend a protein, and you have an affiliate link for it, you put it in the descriptions. Now, if a viewer clicks on that link, and decides to grab or to buy that protein, you get a commission for it. I don't know how much like the average commission is, but it's it's almost free money. I mean, the work you're doing is promoting the product and putting it in your social media, but you're not doing like any of the front end work. You're not boxing it up. You're not going and finding it. You're not really. I guess you do pitch it to them in a sense, but it's scalable too. Yeah, and it lasts like. We were talking about earlier you, it lasts like forever you can have that link out for like years and still get commissions from it yeah. so I don't know that's why I wanted to do freshman year but I didn't do you still have any aspirations uh, for like an online business not like a reselling business but like a affiliate type business or maybe like grow and cultivate an audience of some sort I don't know the problem with that is that <laughs> the, up, the upfront cost was too much for me freshman year. So you have to buy the domain. You have to try to get a following, which through affiliate links, what a lot of people do is they build funnels where they make an ad, and then people have to put their email address in it. And you gain an email list where you can email out products to them. But people often buy, oftentimes buy traffic, which can be pretty expensive. Um, I don't know. It was just a lot of upfront costs. But with, like, FBA, you go out, you buy a book for a dollar, and you can make, like, depending on what it is, you can make lots of money. Uh, so what? what's your biggest flip ever uh, on Amazon? There was a one. this one time I was at, like, this weird ass thrift store thing it's like a thrift store in a barn but I thought I'd just stop in and see what was going on and I got a book that rang up on Scout IQ and it said like a profit of like 200 something bucks which I mean you get those a lot but they're most of the times not accurate and I looked at the Kiba charts and it looked actually kind of consistent so I was like, all right, I'll get it. It was literally a dime. And it was a cookbook, too, which I don't normally have success with cookbooks, but I thought, whatever, it's a dime, I'll get it. And I shipped it in, 
and that was in the summer, and I forgot about it. And then November rolled around, and I was looked at my Amazon app one day, and I sold that book for like two hundred and seventy something bucks. So I turned a dime into a two hundred seventy dollars sale, which yeah. I don't know what it was after fees, what the profit was. I mean, it probably at least like two twenty ish. So yeah, I mean over two hundred. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah, that was a good day. Last words of advice for let, let's say there's a freshman in college, you know, freshman sophomore in college, they're tired of asking their parents for money, they want some extra income, they want to get started doing this, but they don't want to pay for a whole lot, and you've done it without paying for a whole lot, uh, some sneaky ways. <laughs> we might not get into that. Um, but what, what would you what would you recommend? Oh, uh, let's do. One thing is to be consistent in what you're doing. So develop a plan and stick with it. Number two, find some t sort of mentor. For me, you were kind of my mentor. You showed me like everything uh, and kind of got my foot in the door. And number three, don't be afraid to spend money because you have to spend money to make money. I was always like scared that, I don't know, it feels weird at first to be like spending 40 bucks at a Goodwill for a bunch of books, but you can't look at it as in losing 40 bucks. It's, you're making a lot more from that. You have to see the bigger picture in that. Yeah, that's my three uh, points of advice. How do, you, how do you keep your grades up in the process? Damn, you really are juggling me on that. I, I mean, it's impressive. And I, the reason why I'm bringing this up so much is because I don't know, grades get demonized in the reselling community. And this is what I'm seeing personally. I don't mean to call anyone out, but I'm seeing like a lot of people who are very unfocused and they're posting a lot on Instagram, but it seems like their efforts are just scattered 100%. And I think there's something to be said about sitting down and focusing for a few hours. And just because you don't like school, that's okay. But I mean, I, I don't really like school that much, but I, I think to be able to do well at school, it shows that you can sit down and focus. And I think this is something essential to building any type of successful business. So even though your business isn't huge, I mean, I think it's like an integral part to, uh, to how you've succeeded, you know, in school, business, fitness, all this. Um, well, so yeah, how do, you, how, how do you balance? I mean, I know I've, I've asked this I question think, in a few different ways, but like. I think you need to find with whatever you want to do, whether it's school or building the business you need to find whatever you like for me I like, genuinely like my major in school so it's not like a, I don't know it's not difficult for me to focus on that um, I genuinely like going to the gym so it's not a, it doesn't seem like a hassle to me so whatever you want to do you need to find what you like and then it doesn't I don't know it should come easy to you if that makes sense I don't know yeah, no, that, that does. But they, there's got to be things, especially in high school, you don't like every single class. I'm not going to lie. I don't like every single thing I do in business, but some stuff just has to be done. Well, yeah, and you need to put a little fire under your ass. Like, I do with that. FBA, the, f the fire under your ass are the fees, at least for me. Like, for big sellers, fees aren't that big of a deal. <laughs> but for me, it kind of is. Like, I got... 50, 60 bucks in fees. Are you a professional seller? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And I, I, sometimes I don't even make the 40 sales per month mark. But you come pretty close to it? Yeah. Okay. Close to, yeah, close enough to where I keep it. And also the 40 bucks, the $40 fee puts fire under your ass. Yeah. So it kind of makes you go out and source. Oh. Um, I was going to say something else about that. What are we talking we were talking about uh, your grades in school. Oh yeah, and the fire under your ass for there is like the scholarships for me. Um, if I lose those and I'm done. So yeah, you need to find some motivation, something to get you going, stay consistent, find what you like, it'd be golden. Peace out guys. Roma the Roamer, Drew Flesner.